church service started. I uh, just want to welcome everybody. Thank you all for being here today. I uh, do have an announcement I need to make right here that's up here. It says uh, Union Chapel will be providing food for the SEA coaches breakfast this Thursday. If anyone would like to help provide food or funds, please see Christy, Ashley, or Denise. We need help uh, with delivery on Thursday morning at 6.30 uh, to Portland High School. So that is an announcement, and it looks like it's probably being sponsored by WMS with those ladies' names on there. So uh, that's that. If you have any questions, uh, see uh, one of those three ladies, and they'll, they'll get you heading in the right direction. Also, remember, we're having a food drive going on, canned food drive. You can see the canned foods up here. That's going on this week, next week, uh, and the next two weeks. So please bring in some uh, canned foods of Mount Perry Choir. Uh, Next week is friend day, so please bring a friend. All right, anybody has any friends? I, I struggle with that sometimes. So, uh, but uh, yeah, remember November we're kind of just uh, doing some things, uh, uh, try to uh, promote uh, um, getting people into the church or getting people back to church. Uh, also, uh, just want to once again, I, every, every time I've been on stage, uh, guys, we're doing an awesome job uh, keeping each other safe. That way, we can keep on coming here and worshiping with each other. So let's please be mindful of that and just, uh, um, we are very blessed as, at this point right now that uh, we haven't had any issues. I think it's because of the precautions we're taking. So let's just keep respecting those precautions and respecting each other and that way we can keep on coming here and worshiping as a family in this church exactly. building. That's right. All right, anything else that needs to be announced? All right, I'm going to ask Brother Pat to open us in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to keep your presence. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to worship you. Thank you for being a God that is worthy of that, Lord, and only one. Father, we just thank you for uh, the things that the safety you've given our church, and Lord, the, uh, the, the ideas you've given us to be able to uh, to continue to function as, as your body in, in, the, in this world that we, that we see today. Lord, just ask that you be here in our service, that you will bless our, uh, our time together, that you bless our efforts, that they be pleasing to you because you're deserving. Uh, Father, if there's someone here today that doesn't know you for the free pardon of sin and uh, they, that they don't understand what salvation is, Lord, that they, be know, they would know what that is today. And Father, we thank you for our visitors. We thank you for everyone gathered to just, to just uh, lift your name up this morning. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I do want to make an announcement. We were supposed to have the, the thing outside the fellowship time today, but we have decided to uh, lay off on that because just with the, the spike uh, in numbers going up around the community, and we don't want to promote that by no means, or and the weather just wasn't the wind. And all that. So uh, we are, as deacons, still trying to figure out how we can do those kind of things and do those things safely. So uh, just be in prayer for that. And if you have any ideas or set suggestions, see one of the deacons uh, with those ideas and uh, suggestions. Right now we're really, really discussing uh, um, the nativity. Uh, you know, the nativity is a big thing we do here. So uh, please be in prayer for that because there are decisions and things being made that way we can still uh, do that outreach in a different way. Uh, so just be in prayer for that. Well, good morning. Let's all stand. <laughs> All right, want to see everybody out Wednesday night for business meeting at 7 o'clock.
Sounded like a trumpet. He said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, and what you see, write in a book. And he wrote it down just for us this morning. Amen? Amen. He said, I'm going to send some letters to the churches. And you can read the rest of that, and you can see in those chapters how the churches received word from God, words of encouragement and words of chastisement and Words that tell them, you need to get ready, you need to fix this, or you're doing good at this, but you're lacking in this. And God was speaking to the churches. Then if you go to verse 4, I want you to notice something that's happening. And this is our future. John is in the throne room and, and he's seeing things that no man has ever seen. He said, after these things, I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here and I'm going to show you things which may, must take place after this. And he goes on to talk about all the things that he saw. But this is the thing that I thought about. This is our future. Then in verse 6, before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. And the first living creature was like a lion and the second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man and the fourth living creature was like a flying e eagle. And I love this part. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Man, I love that. That's what our future looks like. I believe we need to start practicing our future now. Yeah. You know, Carol and I are getting older. Most people in this room are older than us. I just want to point that out. But a lot of you are, okay. And we're going to be retiring one day. And we're, we're starting to practice retirement. Because we want to be good at it when we get there. Amen. I'll tell you what. When we get to heaven, we're going to be changed. The Bible says we'll be changed in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye. We're going to be in an environment where holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. That's going to be said over and over. That's what these guys do for a living. That's what they do full time. Wouldn't it be great to just praise God for an eternity? I really enjoyed the music this morning and the presence of God in this worship time. And I'm looking so forward to that being the thing that I do. That being the thing that I enjoy all the time. I believe that's going on right now. I believe they've been doing that for eternity. And when we get there, there'll be another eternity to go to listen to those words and to praise Him ourselves. Just let me read the rest of it. Might as well. Verse 9 says, Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne. And they worship him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. We're created with a purpose. We're created by the very hand of God. We're going to worship him in person one day. I'm looking forward to that. Amen. So don't look at your phone. I'm a, I wish I could take that app off my phone. It's just discouraging, isn't it? To look around and see what's going on. It's not our hope. But it's not our hope. I think, did we sing a song? What song did we sing today? All my hope is in Jesus. All my hope is in Jesus. the Dow Jones. <laughs> All my hope is in Jesus, yes. Okay. Listen, I just, I had that thought when we were singing that song. Such a beautiful scripture that describes what we have in our future. And I love that. I love that we have that to look forward to. Everybody turn to, um, let's see here. <clears throat> Acts chapter 19. <coughs> Acts chapter 19. I want to talk about faith this morning and talk about living a life of faith. And what happens when that happens. Okay? <laughs> what happens when faith happens? in your life? What happens when you begin to really live that life? And something different happens to you when you live by faith. I'm going to read Acts 19, 11 through 20. I'm going to read that through that real quick. And I just want to talk about this story. Interesting story in the Bible. I don't know that there's maybe 
another one. There's other similar ones, I guess, but uh, this one is unique. Acts 19.11, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. So he's talking about the great things that God was doing through the Apostle Paul. But look at verse 13. Then some of the itinerant Jew Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of, of Sceva, I guess is the way you pronounce that, a Jewish priest who did so. They did, that, they did the same thing. Look at verse 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this became known both to all the Jews and the Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who had believed came, confessing and telling their deeds. Also many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them, of the books, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Let's pray one more time. Father, we thank you for this story in the Bible. We thank you that it's true. And it gives us an example of what happens when we live by faith, when we have a living relationship with you, and we exercise that faith that's in us through the Holy Spirit. God, I pray that we would see in this scripture something that would change our lives. God, that we'd be reminded of something that we already know, that we're called to live by faith, we're called to walk by faith and not by sight. Father, I pray that you would Drive that point home in our hearts this morning in the name of Jesus. So when it comes to faith, I heard one older preacher say, and I don't know who said this first, but when it comes to faith in Christ, there's believers and there's non-believers and there's make-believers. You ever heard that? That's an old one, right? Brother Harper, you've probably said that a couple times, haven't you, in, in your uh, 40 or 50 years? How long have you been preaching, brother? 40. 40 years? Okay. That's... I'll take that answer. That's good. 40 years. It's a long time. So, but there's no substitute. Listen, there, there's no substitute for a real living relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. <coughs> He's the only one by which, only way by which we can reach God. He's the only one through whom, whom we can have a relationship with God. He introduces us to God. He pays the price for us. So that we can be with God and become part of the family. And so when these Jewish exorcists came upon a man that was possessed with a demon. And they said to the demon, we're going to exorcise you. You need to get out of that man in the name of Jesus. You know the guy that Paul knows. That doesn't work. And this is a great example of what people do in their lives. There's a lot of folks that call on the name of Jesus when they're in trouble. And they're, they're about to have a problem and they say, oh God, oh Jesus, what am I going to do? And they don't know him at all. Now I want to tell you that Jesus is compassionate and he's merciful and he's calling out to us right now. If you don't know him right now, he's calling out to you today. He's constantly calling out to you. Come to me and I'll give you the rest that you need. I'll give you salvation. I'll give you forgiveness of sin. But for those who don't come to Christ, for those who don't believe, Using that name has no power. Using that name does nothing. And that's what these Jewish exorcists found out the hard way. It says they left the house naked and wounded. That's kind of a bad situation to be in. They got beat up pretty bad, it sounds like. So there's no substitute for their relationship with God through Christ. In fact, I'm going to say this. I'm going to make a statement. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. We're not going to accomplish anything of eternal value without the power of God working inside of us. Amen? And we must build up and continually nurture this and practice, I guess, this dependency on God. I want to be independent, Brother Mark. I want to stand on my own two feet, and God wants you to do that, but he also at the same time wants you to be dependent fully on him. Because there's things in this life that you can't do. 
In fact, there's not anything of any consequence that you can do without God. And so this relationship we have with God, this life of faith that he's called us to live is of utmost importance. You need it in your own life and the people around you need to see it in you. And this, this is a great story as an example of what happens when, uh, when people really live by faith. And so there were, there were three examples of people in this, in this uh, story of the Bible. There were the believers, the non-believers, the make-believers, which were those Jewish exorcists. I think you probably figured that one out. But there's really four characters in this story. The fourth character is the enemy. The fourth character was the one who, whose demons were inside of that man, those demons they were trying to exorcise. The fourth character is the enemy. He's a real enemy. Our enemy's not playing a game. He's trying to destroy the souls of people. He's focused. He's done his homework. He's practiced. And he's serious about destroying the lives of people. He's not pretending. But he knows when we're pretending. Amen? And so we've got to find a way to live, to really live a life of faith. A life of total dependency on God. We've got to find a way to learn that and begin to develop that, that muscle memory, that spiritual muscle memory, if you want to put it like that, where it becomes an automatic thing to be totally dependent on God and to not focus on what's going on around us, but to focus on our relationship with Him and on what He said in His Word and what He's promised us. Because that's not going to change. The world's going to change. The Dow is going to go up and down. If you like roller coasters, invest in the stock market. That's awesome. It's a great ride. Scare you to death. <laughs> Amen. But if you want something that lasts forever, if you want someone who will be with you forever, if you want strength and power that's constant and consistent in your life, live a life of faith, a life in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. How, what happens then? Let's look at what happens from this story. When we start to live our lives in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what Paul was doing. Paul was living his life in the Holy Spirit. But look at this story. We'll see exactly what happened. And I'm going to tell you, if you practice living a life of faith, these are the things that are going to happen in your life. This is an example for us to go by. This is what God does in the life of a Christian who lives by faith. First of all, it says that the name of Jesus will be magnified. Look at verse... Uh, Look at verse 17. It says, This became known both to all the Jews and the Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. The thing that became known was that here's Paul casting out demons in the name of Jesus. It was evident that there was power in Paul's life. It wasn't his own power. It was the power of the Holy Spirit in him. And it was evident and they'd seen that. And then they saw on the other hand, in, in stark contrast to that, the way the Jewish exorcists, these itinerant exorcists, the ones that went around from town to town making their living exorcising demons. So, as at least they said they were. And so, there's this contrast and they realized, here we are, we're in the presence of Paul and we know there's something inside of him, a great power, and, and, and this person, Jesus, there's power in his name. And so, it, it says in verse 17, this became known and fear fell on all of them and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. They saw that the power of God in Paul was real. Listen to this. When we start living by faith, the world is going to see something different in us. They're going to see something powerful operating beneath the surface in our lives, in the background in our lives. They're going to see something in us that nobody else has or that they don't see in everyone. At least they're going to see us living our life on purpose. We're not just going to punch the clock and get another paycheck and be that much closer to retirement. That's not, you know, we're, we're headed that direction, but that's not why we're living. That's not why we do what we do. I don't know why God puts us where we are. You know, I thought about Paul when I was getting ready for this. I thought about all the things that he went through. All the things that he suffered for Christ. And that should be a surprise because he told Ananias, you know the guy that laid hands on Paul where he received his sight after he was blinded in Damascus? 
Ananias. He told Ananias, he said, no, I want you to go because Paul's a chosen vessel for me and I'm going to show him all the things he's got to suffer for my sake. Paul was beaten and he was shipwrecked and he was, after he got off the shipwreck, boy, he thought, boy, that was lucky and he reaches down to put logs in the fire and he gets bit by a poisonous snake. That's not lucky. Paul suffered a lot of things. He just shook that snake off. Oh, God was in him and he was all right. But I'm just saying, I think about Paul and all the places Paul went and all the people he saw. He saw sailors and he talked to them about Christ. And he saw soldiers and he talked to them about Christ. And he saw governors and he talked to them about Christ. He saw Jews that were trying to accuse him and have him killed. He talked to them about Christ. I think there was a purpose in Paul's life. I'm, I'm sensing a pattern. And that's the way, the way we should be living. People should sense that there's a purpose greater than the average person. They should see us as different. And when they do that, when they see that our lives are different and they hear us speak the name of Jesus, they do the spiritual math and they figure it out. There must be something about this Jesus that's powerful. Amen? Amen? And that's what living a life of faith does for an individual. So let's go on. We'll read the rest of the story. <coughs> Look at verse 18. It says, And many who had believed, they came confessing and telling their deeds. When the name of Jesus is magnified in our lives because of our life of faith and our life of purpose in front of people, people start to believe in the power of Christ. And when we stand with evil and sin in our lives in, in front of Jesus Christ, we have to confess. It's called conviction. We were talking about that. I don't like to say conviction so, because it's such a negative word and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm smiling if you can't tell. I don't mind seeing somebody under conviction because conviction happens when the Holy Spirit tell somebody the truth. And they know in their heart they need to be saved. They need to be forgiven. That's conviction. And what comes next? Confession. That's what's happening here. When the name of Jesus is magnified and people sense the presence of God and the power of God in their life and they're standing before someone holy. I'm not talking about me or you. I'm talking about they know that Jesus is in our life. And when they're standing in the presence of one who is holy, they realize they're not. Just like we do when we fall and we fail and we sin and we continually do that and now if you don't if you figured out how to live life without sin give me a call I'd like to talk to you because I'm still human and I still make mistakes and I still sin and I still get under conviction because God says look you can't do that Mark you've committed your life to me Have you, are you backing up on your commitment what's going on with that you need to straighten up Mark he says that all the time because he loves me. And so these, these folks that saw the power of Jesus Christ and felt like they were in the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit, they, they uh, were convicted. They were under conviction. They confessed their deeds. They repented of their deeds. And things changed. They realized that the power of Christ was real. And they were in fear. It says, fear fell on all of them. That's verse 17. Fear fell on all of them. What were they afraid of? They were afraid because they were in the presence of holiness. And they realized finally that they were ungodly, that they were unholy. And so they were afraid. It says they confessed their deeds. And so this process, conviction, confession, repentance, and change that took place in the lives of these people. When we live a life of faith, I believe we'll look around and see the lives of the people around us changing. Amen? We'll look around and because of the faithfulness of God, because we've lived a life of faith in others and we've mentioned the name of Jesus, His name is going to be magnified. They'll realize their sin and they'll turn to Christ and their lives will change. What's the next thing? It said that the Word, uh, when, when we live this life of faith, it said in the story, the Word of God grows mightily and prevails. Now, um, I didn't know exactly where to ask this question and have you think about this, but I'm just going to say it right now. Wouldn't it be great? Okay, maybe, let me ask you a different one. Does anybody get tired of watching the news? And you get this feeling in the back of your mind somewhere that, 
Boy, that's a lie. Now, I, don't, I was going to kind of soft pedal that and say people don't always tell the whole truth. But you know what happens when you're not telling the whole truth? You're lying. So the media has been lying to us for years. And I'm not just talking about one channel or the other. One's about as bad as the next. Because they're not worried about telling us, just I'll get on my soapbox or off my soapbox in a minute. They're not worried about telling us what's happening. They're worried about selling product. They're worried about selling advertising. That's their goal. That's their business. Not news. And it doesn't matter who it is. It's not news. It's advertising. I know that. Now sometimes they'll tell some of the truth. And you have to just pick to try, you know. It's like eating a, a, a eating fish with bones in it. You know, you just, by the time you get done, you got about that much fish, about this much bones, right? That's how the news media is. Well, I'm just going to get off of that. But would it be great if for one time, for, for and it'd be great if it happened tomorrow or today, would it be great if they just had to tell the truth? <coughs> would it be great to just learn the truth? Would it be great if, if, People in the media would just tell the truth. Wouldn't it be great if people on social media would just tell the truth? And they don't tell the truth because they don't know the truth. Amen? Amen? But now everything you hear on the internet is true, right, Pat? No. <laughs> so wouldn't it be great if our politicians, the only time they could speak anything would be speaking the truth? Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Well, that's not the world that we live in. But I want to tell you, when we live a life of faith around people, when we live this life of faith in Jesus Christ, I'm trusting God that this is what's going to happen. Look at what happened in, uh, on the next few verses here. I'm trying to find my place. Look at verse 19. It's in 19. It says, Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. That's a good thing. It said the price of those books was about 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a lot. So they burned these books. And why was that significant? And Rod, it kind of struck me that these magicians and these people that had, did magic and cast spells and all that, the words in those books were important. Because if you say the words just right, something happens. You know, my head gets replaced with a pig's head or something. I don't know what happens, you know. Depends on what you say, right? Well, that was their living. And they were living uh, by a power that was not the power of God. And they were depending on those words. Wouldn't it be great if we swapped the CBS or NBC or ABC nightly news and Fox News and CNN and MSNBC? Wouldn't it be great if we just swapped all of those news sources and we just let the word of God be magnified in us. And we let the word prevail in us. We'd be a lot better off, wouldn't we? We listen to so much junk, it's a wonder that we're still other living breed. It says in the story that these magicians, they burned these books. The words that were powerful to them were burned up. Man, that's change, isn't it? That's what happens when you live a life of faith. The word of God grows mightily. It grows stronger in the lives of people because it's strong in you. And the word of God replaces the word of man. And things get better. That's what I wish for this country. This event of burning the books, it led other people to believe in the testimony of those that and said, you know, I used to be a magician. This was their testimony. They went into the high schools in Jerusalem and they talked to the young kids and they said, hey, I used to be a magician, but I burned those books. Those books were worth a fortune, but I turned over my life to Jesus. You know, that'd be a great testimony, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Don't you have a great testimony? Yes, Weren't you living in sin? Weren't you on your way to hell? And didn't God save you by the power of Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. The fact that he died on the cross. Don't you have a great testimony to tell? Yeah. When we live this life of faith and we tell what God has done for us, things happen. The name of Jesus is magnified. Uh, people are convicted and people change. The word of God grows mightily and it begins to prevail in our lives. And I'm going to tell you this. If the word of God does not prevail in your life today, you need to start living a life of faith. 
If you have more faith in CNN than you do uh, the New King James or whatever every version you're looking at, you need to switch up. Yeah. You need to burn that book and hold on to this book. Amen. Amen. It's a great story that talks about what happens when we live a life of faith. What happens when we don't? Just the opposite. Jesus' name is not magnified. In fact, it's abused. Kind of like it's happening today. People aren't brought under conviction. They just get mad at us when we say anything. They say, you're judging me. It's just like it's happening today. The word of God doesn't prevail. In fact, it begins to weaken. And now the word of God doesn't mean anything. Well, it's just a book. It's just ink on some pages. Everybody's got two or three in their house that don't read them. And now the word becomes much less important. Listen, we've got to live a life of faith. If you believe that this is the word of God, we've got to start reading this and living by it. You know, if we believe that Jesus died on the cross for us, why wouldn't we tell others about him? Why wouldn't we put all of our hope in Jesus like the song says? Well, we just don't. But when we begin to live this life of faith, things change and things begin to happen. So what about your relationship with God? Is it real and is it living? And is it the reason that you get up in the morning? Is it what you go to bed with at night? And do you wake up in the middle of the night and... And you got a thousand thoughts on your mind. Do you begin to pray and say, God, I'm just, uh, I just am so glad that I'm living and breathing and that you woke me up tonight so I could just have a conversation with you. Have you ever spoken to Jesus from your bed in the middle of the night, early in the morning before you get up? Listen, you need to have that relationship with God. You need to be close to him. Is your relationship real and healthy? Is he your source of strength and power and hope? And I'm just asking you this morning to look at your own life. Are you living, really living that life of faith? Is there some things that you can do better? I think we'd all say amen to that. Yes, we could. I want to encourage you to live that life of faith on your job. I want you to live that life of faith when you get up tomorrow morning, Monday. The worst day of the week in some people's book. You know it's the best day of the week because you've just been to church the day before. You got filled up with the Holy Spirit and you can't wait to tell somebody at work about what you heard. Amen? Okay, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> Monday is a good day because you've been to church the, the previous day and you got filled up with the Holy Spirit and you can't wait to get to work to tell somebody about what the preacher said and what about, about what God said to you in church on Sunday. Isn't that right, amen? amen? That's a lot better. I don't know if you meant it or not, but it felt good. We've got to live that life of faith. I believe things will change when we begin to live by faith. Amen. Would you stand with me? <laughs> Are you living that life of faith that on the job and at home? At Walmart? Are you living the life of faith at Walmart? You can even do that. God is with us and he's called us to live a life of faith. Are you seeking Him every day? Are you seeking to know Him more? Are you growing deeper in love with Christ? That's the expectation God has of us, isn't it? That we learn more about Him, and the more we learn, the more we love Him. We serve a God that is unsearchable and unknowable, yet we're called to seek Him and search for Him. And the Bible says we'll find Him when we seek Him with our whole hearts. Christian life isn't easy, but it's simple, isn't it, Brother Harper? It's very simple. God says, seek me and you'll find me. God says, live for me, trust me, serve me, and I'll give you the desires of your heart. I'll give you all that you need. I'll protect you. I'll take care of you. Our focus needs to be on Christ. Let's bow our heads together. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. And we praise you, Lord, for what you're doing in our church. We praise you for what you're doing in this country. But God, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us in such a way that others would see that our lives are different. That when we use the name of Jesus, it would be used in power and glory. That his name would be magnified. And that those that stand in the presence of Christ would fall under conviction. And repent of their sins and be saved, Lord, and be, become followers of Christ, to give up all the other words that they depended on and 
and begin to, be, to depend on the Word of God, that the Word of God might grow and become more and more mighty in this land, and it might prevail in us. God, I pray that you'd accomplish it in us. God, if we, if there's somebody here today who needs to grow closer to you, if there's someone who needs to renew their covenant with you, if there's someone here or someone listening online that doesn't know Christ, I pray they would seek Him today. Jesus is the only one who was able to pay the penalty for our sin because He was perfect. And He paid the penalty for our sin on the cross. And all we have to do is accept the forgiveness that He's offered. God, I pray that people would confess their sin before God, would accept the forgiveness of Christ, and they'd be saved today. God, have your way during this time of invitation. In Christ's name, amen. If you need to pray, you can Oh, my I must see straight from one so Praise God. He's worthy of our praise.
crazy. Anybody else, real quick, one more. We all should say, praise God. Why don't we just do that on the count of three? One, two, three. Praise God. And I know we've got plenty to praise her about. We just get quiet sometimes. We're going to bring some rocks in next Sunday and put them at the end of each pew. And, and if your rock is talking, do you not praise him enough? So maybe we'll just do that, see what God does. But uh, appreciate everybody being here. Just want to make a, a couple of announcements. One is I want to remind everybody, I don't know if you heard Steve, and I know Carol mentioned it too, but we've got the annual incorporation meeting this uh, Wednesday night at 7. Uh, so elected church officers and that kind of thing, please be here. Uh, it's an important meeting, and, and we need you to, to attend and vote and all that kind of thing. So be here for that. Then uh, also, we're going to be in two weeks, be the 15th. Uh, we're going to open the doors of the church to accept new members. If you have been coming for a while and you're interested in becoming a member, uh, we want to, uh, I'd like to talk to you about your salvation and about what it means to be a church member and that kind of thing. And so uh, if you're interested in that, come talk to me. And then in two weeks, we'll be accepting members into the church. And uh, we'd be proud to have you guys. But listen, if you've been attending here for a long time and you just want to attend, that's all right too because we enjoy uh, folks coming and, and just worshiping with us. So God bless you for being here. And uh, want everybody to be safe. And, you know, we, we're going to have the dinner, like Hunter said, uh, after church. And we're going to reschedule that. But uh, more than anything else, we want everybody to be safe. We don't want any problems uh, with COVID here in our church. And, and we're just trying our best to do that. I appreciate everybody wearing their mask and keeping it on and that kind of thing. So God bless you for doing that. I know it's not the easiest thing. But uh, you ought to be uh, singing or preaching and, and take a deep breath and the mask goes to the back of your throat. That's a great feeling. <laughs> but, um, hey, one more thing. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if anybody is not getting the one calls and you yes. would like to be added to that, just take a piece of paper <coughs> or something, write your name and phone number down and drop it over here in the offering box on your way out. That way we can make sure we add you to the one call. It just keeps you updated with some things. We try to get at least one out every week, sometimes two. But uh, if we can get you that information and just kind of keep you abreast of the things that's going on here at the church, then uh, we'll be glad to add you, add you to the one call. Okay, thank you. All right. All done? Don't forget about the food drive. Yeah. I can, I'm, I'm still able to be seen, so we need to be... be yeah, to you need to get it tall enough where you don't have to look at him. <laughs> so, yeah, please bring your canned goods in. We actually forgot ours, so I'm not being a real good example here, but... Uh, we'll bring ours next week, and we'll get them stacked up. We, we'd like to have a lot to give out and uh, uh, help the people in the community that need it most, okay? All right, we're going to pray and be dismissed and uh, or ask Brother Mark back here to lead us in prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for the blessings that you've given to us. We're thankful that we still have this opportunity to come and worship together, dear Heavenly Father.